Welcome to Scar. It is a land fraught with peril, adventure, but most of all, change. Around every corner lies a forgotten civilization. Behind every tale of adventure, a journey fraught with temptation. Scratching the surface usually leads to breaking the veil between this era and the last, and those who look to fill in the edges of the map usually don't come back. This is a world where if one is willing, you can become famous and a hero, or just as easily forgotten. A world where every gamble has the odds against you, and the punishment is final, death, but the reward, your heart's desires. What would you do with endless opportunity and an adventurous spirit? We look to our players, heroes already in their own rights, to see how they plan to continue their legend. I bid thee greetings, redeemed in divine races, titan spawn, and ancient ones. I am Patrick, known by the whisper on the sea breeze and the hearts of dragons. That's Patty Shakes underscore. And I am the game master for the story. This is the finale of our continuing campaign, Draco Genesis Season 2, A Flight of Whimsy, taking place in Scarred Lands, a setting published by Onyx Path Publishing. This is an awesome adventure brought to you by Avorpal Tales. You can find Verbal Tales in lots of places on the internet. Of course, we are on Twitch right here, right now. Consider giving us a follow or subscribe. Check out all of our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at Verbal Tales. That's where you can get updates about our cast and what they're doing. A website, VorpalTales.com, where you can get links to our affiliates and see your up-to-date calendars. A Patreon and a Ko-Fi, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss a coin to us in order to make more, better, and Vorpal Tailier content. I'd like to thank Onyx Path Publishing for making an incredible world and setting to use to amaze and delight. Also to Astral Tabletop for being our virtual tabletop where we can see the baddies who look to waylay our heroes and get that sweet, sweet ambiance. Speaking of ambiance, a thank you goes to Vinsupt, a wonderful YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. And additionally, Warple Tales has some fantastic sponsors that we'd love to tell you all about. First is QUEmpire.com, a small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Use code Vorpal Tales for 10% off. Next is Hit Point Press, known for the various reference cards, but also for creating the Humplewood and Hecna campaign settings. Visit VorpalTales.com, click on our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion of it will benefit the show. We also have Gem Hammer, Gem Hammer and Sons, an RPG supplement store that has everything from decks of wonder to decks of illusion to dice. Once again, use discount code Warple Tales for 10% off. And finally, Dungeon Crate. Dungeon Crate is the original RPG loot box, delivering tabletop gear like dice, minis, and terrain, plus original adventures to your castle doors every month. Become a member and get your crate today. Use code VORPALTALESDC, that's VORPALTALES, Delta Charlie, all in capitals, at checkout to get $5 off a new membership. And now, my dear, dear viewers, it is time we meet our intrepid adventurers who look to you for the last time. Sail, slay, search, seduce, and shift the very core of Scar. Please, state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you'll be playing tonight. That's me. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and tonight I am playing Lamalthoon, Drindali Elf Wizard Fighter. Tonight, for possibly the last time, for possibly the last time with my, my dear friends of this party, I'll be playing Devok, Warrior Extraordinaire, an Eldritch Knight. Friends, my name is Birdie, and tonight in our finale, I will be playing Sikar Pejat, a mage and scholar of great renown. Hello, friends. My name is Keem, so you can find me on the interwebs at It's Me Keems. Tonight, I will be playing Sayana, the Hollow Legionnaire Death Cleric of Van Gaal. Hello all, I am Devin, you can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and tonight I am playing for possibly the last time alive, Gar. 
the paladin who just wants everyone to live. Not looking with too good. Fucking luck with that. Stolen fires just boosted Patty three times. <laughs> and and everyone wants- else. And everyone else once. Everyone uh, else Ambrose once twice, and Keen the twice. <laughs> okay, someone, someone, when when Sol, when Stolen Fires is done, someone do a final tally of all the boosts and put it in chat. <laughs> Not it. I can't scroll okay, with my hold warlock on. Uh, I, I already got it going right now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So that's Patty times three. Has everybody gone for their intro? Uh, yes, uh, you all all notice and we have addressed in chat, uh, but Ambrose is not currently here. Do not fear, they will be here. Uh, they have some awesomeness they're doing right now that I will not disclose in case they want to keep it private, but rest assured it's all good things uh, and they will be joining us a little bit later on. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if we do get to Yine's turn uh, before Ambrose has returned, uh, I will play for them, uh, of course, playing at the full extent of Yine's power and trying to uh, deal with the current situation. Yes, uh, Stephen Green. Can I just make one comment that I heard a lot of people saying, possibly for the last time, playing their character, and I just want to say, I am 100% playing Lamalthoon again because Lamalthoon cannot die. <laughs> there is zero chance no whatsoever. Plan. No plans oh, on dying with golden you. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. That 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 means that Steve is okay season three. Holy shit! Congrats, guys. Well done. Season three. Season three. Hell yeah! Cheers Look, even if that. we didn't stream it, I would want to play again with y'all because I have had an absolute blast. Loving me oh, some scarred lands. All right, before we get too emotional, you do have to get through Udagas first. So. Let's, uh, let's have the indomitable Lamal Thun for the last time for this season give a summary of last week's events. Uh, hold on, I have to get that squared away because I should open the recap. Okay, perfect. I wrote this one special for you. <laughs> she did. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Let me catch you up to speed. Six months ago, my associates and I set out to the Blood Step in order to put an end to an occult threat in a long dead temple. There, we enlisted the aid of a curious war priest to Vangel, an eccentric scholar. Together, the cultists of Kedem. Kedem? Kedem? Mm. Kedem? Kedem. The cultists of Kedem. I nearly killed him. <laughs> God <Ooh>. damn it. <laughs> And their abominations fell before us, and in the ruins we each found an item, we'll say. Three months after that, we received a call to aid from the Dragon King himself, Verduk. It was curiously addressed to the heroes of Elysian and friends. An interesting way to put it, indeed. Thus, we set out again with these two hangers-on, via the long road to the heart of the Calastian hmm, hegemony, hegemony, to receive our orders. The king was an interesting man, but only that. With his blessings, we were sent to a port town named for some fickle ocean goddess and shipped out to sea. Our goal follow the navigator's guidance to a runaway magical island and claim the power at its heart. Thus, for a month or two, we sat around swinging our legs and biding our time until we found the damned thing. Somewhere along the way, I solved our kraken problem, and we got a lovely look at the bottom of the ocean. Not long after, we landed ashore the drifting isle, down from six ships to one. Over the past day or so, we've trekked across the island to the depths of a twisting volcanic layer to find Utagast. And find it we did. After facing a nuisance from the Seeker's storied past in triplicate, we caught our breath for just a moment in a curious foggy void. Acadia 
the mirror mage so kindly dropped the illusion and left us face to wretched face with the alien puppet master that had stolen this island. Take a look at the map. This is how things stand. Disparate forces poised for the slaughter of yet another big fish. It is another stepping stone in the path to our inner divinity. If the others wish to squander this opportunity, so be it. I, as always, will rise above. That is, of course, provided we can survive it. Utagast has exhibited the ability to control and warped minds, to raise the dead, to control the very waters it corrupts. And it is, after all, a very big fish. I've eaten big fish before. Do my associates have an appetite for battle? Do you, viewer? You are about to find out. Join us tonight, come heavens, hells, or the black abyss, as we bring you the season finale of Dracogenesis, A Flight of Whimsy. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <clears throat> now, this is the part where I tell you that I was excellently orated by none other than uh, Steve, uh, a.k.a. Amathun, and written by the wonderful Birdie, a.k.a. Secret Bajant. And this would be the part where I say, now both of you get inspiration for that wonderful job. However, it seems the inspiration from the gods cannot reach you here in Udagas' domain. And you do not get inspiration. Uh, Lamalthun curses the gods and takes the inspiration anyway, inspiring himself. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> well, as buddy, I got three applies, points left. You can have one of mine. Oh uh, no! As the battle music implies, it is time to get back into combat. Where we had just oh. left off, Devok had been dropped to zero hit points. The rip in reality had been dragging several of you closer into its claws, into the crushing depths of the nothingness. And meanwhile, Utagas laughed as Yune tried to pierce it with an arrow. It is Utagas' turn. Utagas in the middle of this pool. A good portion of it showing, you think, isn't this, but surely there's not much more to this creature. Abolists are a known entity. While mysterious, yes, their general makeup physiology is known. But as Dragas draws himself up out of the water and moves forward, unaffected, by the rip in reality and moves closer to all of you. You take on and see his true form for the first time. Your brain cannot comprehend how his body is shaped, how many mouths he has, how many eyes, how many tentacles. You try to in give make sense of what you're seeing, what your brain is telling you you're seeing. Alas, you are not able to. Udagas comes closer, ever closer, to the unconscious form of Devok on the ground. The air around all of you starts to shimmer, almost as if a heat wave has passed through, but you do not feel any of that. And then Udagas, with its many eyes looking at all of you, whips its tentacles down. One at Devok, one at Yine, and one at Sion. No. Devok is a 25 hit you. Uh, yeah. Sion does a 19 hit you. 
Um, my AC is 19 exactly. Double hit. Change your name. Oh, wait, no, yeah, she's in D&D Beyond. Aha, D&D Beyond, everyone. <laughs> One second. Let's clear sheet up a little bit. Okay. AC is 17, so this would miss. So, damage to uh, Sienna is going to be... Uh, 15 bludgeoning damage as one of these large tentacles slams down onto you. And I need you to also give me a constitution saving throw. Will do. That is an 11. That is a fail. Mm. As the tentacle, you were you kind of catch it a little bit in your arms and prevent it from completely flattening you against the ground. But you, this writhing mass is in your hands and you feel it slide across your skin and slide across you. Uh, you uh, Sienna, are you uh, susceptible to disease? Um, I actually have advantage on poisoning and diseases. Okay, then you may roll that constitution save you just did at advantage. So you can okay. roll again. Good luck. 15 and a 21. 21 will succeed. So your your glove gauntlets luckily are able to keep it from touching any significant parts of you. You kind of heft it off as it raises its tentacle again. Uh, that's... it's. And that's what we'll do on its turn. Uh, let's see. Next would be Devok. So Devok is going to almost like he was on wires. Have his elbows, his hands facing down, his elbows and his back picked up like a marionette and he's going to stand straight up with the and his, have his axes rest and get aside and he's going to turn around and charge Cyana the fuck did you say he's going to turn on Cyana he's turning and charging Cyana the creature it is affecting his mind uh, all right, and then he is going to mm -hmm. uh, He is going to take one booming blade attack on you okay, go ahead and Oh no uh, That's a ten don't worry. I mean I'm rolling like shit. You know what he has inspiration. He would do this yeah, he would he would reroll. Uh, You're spending your inspiration while mind control. Uh, so that's a twenty six to hit. Does that hit? John, hits. you're too good of a good boy. Don't do that. Oh yeah. It hits. All right. Uh, so roll damage. Uh, so that's uh, ten points plus an extra D eight. D eight. Oh yeah, he gets. He gets nasty. Yeah, it's only one. It's only 11 points, so that's fine. Um, he's going to take an extra melee attack because he did an, a cantrip in combat. Oh, no. Uh, does a 25 hit? I, I I wish I could say no, but I can't. <laughs> um, all right, that's fine. It's just another eight points of damage. Uh, and he's going to leave this axe stuck in you. Um... As he leaves this axe stuck in her armor, um, Sayana crumples to the ground. She is downed. Okay. Um, and he's go he's going to he's going to look at uh, look at her and grab the axe 
drummer and flip flip her around and go now you will see the divinity that is Utgast and he's gonna action surge and attack you nay <laughs> yeah. uh, well, that's, uh, that probably doesn't hit. Is that 18? 18 does hit your knife. Oh, that's a movie blade attack, so. Oh, that's pretty good. 6 plus d8, so 6 points plus. 4, so 10 points. Uh, they will use their uncanny dodge to have that to 5. Okay, um, I get one more melee attack. I'm going to leave the first axe embedded and I'm going to take another melee attack uh, because I use a cantrip again. Uh, does 14 hit? Uh, 14 does not hit. Okay. Um, that's going to be it for me. Okay. <clears throat> As Devok unleashes this full flurry of blows this you know Devok to be this battle master this cyclone of blades whirling across the field when he's feeling his battle lust he has a look in his eye he's out for blood as Sayana falls you all hear Udagast <laughs> See how you fall. Another for my arm. Oh no. Uh, well, not fair. It is your turn. Um. Well, you see, the problem is everything. <laughs> Okay, so I'm there. <laughs> Problem is, all of it. We haven't rested since the fight with Arcadia. Oh, we have not. We dropped right into this one. So... We don't have, like, any of our abilities. All right. No, I have one spell left, homie. One, two, three... I don't have shit. One, two, three, four, five. Um, uh, fuck this noise. Um, if, if everyone's being mind-controlled, go to the source of the control, right? So, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Making sure to not travel by Sayana or Devok. Um, and, um, movement, um, because we dropped in though, that does mean that my blade song, I'm assuming, is still active. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. That's cool and good. <laughs> um, yeah. Um,. That's an action to cast. Fuck. I need to get it out of the way. Alright, before moving, I'm casting haste, and then I'm moving into position. Um, uh, so that's my action, that's a move, and then... Uh, I forget with bonus actions. There's... Like, dodge. You know, like, kind of just make myself harder to hit since I'm standing next to the person. Uh, dodge is an action. That is an action in combat. Okay. It Rose. is only a bonus action for rogues. Yep, 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 yep. You're right. That's, un that's yeah. All right, cool. But I'm hasted, so that's that's good for me. Don't Which... you get another attack if you're hasted? Like another action? Do you get it right away? Do you get a uh, second action? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I mean, if you could take a dodge. 
Uh, okay, that action can be used only to take the attack. Okay, so I can't attack right away. I'm sorry, for some reason yes, in my head I was like, that was my action, so I wouldn't get the next action until the next thing. I get it now. Aha! Alright, but that's my yes, only, that's my third, that's my last spell. Okay, cool. Alright, <clears throat> well, third level spell at least. Alright, cool. Um, so, uh, hasted, move up, gonna take an attack. Alright, roll an attack. Does a 19 hit with a guest? It does. Okay. Um, so... Alright. So with all my, my, my bells and whistles set up for my default attack... That can't be a green flame blade, can it? Because that's not the attack action, right? Uh, correct. So it has... It can't be a green flame... Okay, cool. Good clarification. Alright. So... First off... 11 piercing damage from the blade, plus I am using a psionic die to add an additional d6 to that, okay. to add another 2 on top of that for a total of 13 damage, 2 of that is psychic. Okay. No, so it was force. 13, it was Two, so it's 11 piercing to force. Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, is that your turn? Yep. Okay. Uh, at the end of your turn, you would also use a legendary action uh, to use its psychic drain ability. Uh, Devok. You take... Nine points of psychic damage. Alrighty. And you may give me a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom, you say? Mm hmm. I am fine on those. No. God damn it, Steven. Uh, that's a four. You know what? This feels important. I'm gonna roll. Okay. I'm gonna use a reroll. Alrighty. Does a 14 do anything? 14 does not succeed, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, Lamalfin, you have a question. Only because I feel like every point of damage will matter in this fight. Could you sure. add three more force damage to my last attack? Because I forgot I get to I can. add. I get to add a modifier to that. Thank you. Alrighty. I will. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so uh, you see, <clears throat> after uh, Lamalfin runs up to. Uh, what he thinks is kind of the edge of Urugas' being, just kind of haphazardly slashes in there. You strike something, you feel resistance against your blade, but you're not sure what it is. Your blade does come back, and it's slick with kind of this indigo-colored liquid on it. it just Urugas doesn't even seem to react to that. But uh, the tentacle that had slammed down Devok previously kind of starts wrapping around Devok like a boa constrictor would from his feet all the way up around his neck and you just see that tentacle just undulate once and Devok visibly reacts and his, his face contorts up and strains and you see the veins in his forehead bulge and then the tentacle slides back down him and for a brief second you see Devok kind of blink his eyes a couple times but then he has renewed vigor as he continues to stay square off with the name. Uh, okay. Gar, it is now your turn. All right. So, uh, is this mind control look like it's uh, from whatever Udagas hit them with, or is it just pure psychic mind control? Can I tell? Not sure. I can tell you, and I tell you, I will handle the Vok. Take care of the beast. So then I'm just oh, going to uh, go right up oh, there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Real quick. Lamalthoon, I need you, since you uh, attacked Udgas with a melee attack, I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Sorry, did I miss something? Four. A four? Uh, it is against a is against a disease. Uh, if you have advantage against that or are immune to that for any reason. 
Is it against being charmed? No. Is it, is it, is it taking a lot of drugs at once? <laughs> no. It's specifically a disease. I have nothing against disease. Okay. Uh, you have... Just mark it down. Uh, you are diseased. Okay. Nothing immediately happens right now. Uh, okay. Gar, now you may go. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so Gar is going to then run up and... Uh, just flavor text at the tentacle that's wrapping around uh, uh, Duvok. I will stab at that. Okay. Go ahead and give me a attack roll. Uh, does a 25 hit? 25 does hit. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, smack it and I will burn a level 2 spell to make this 3 Die eight for uh, divine smite. Hell yeah! Excellent. Oh, ha, ha, get him! Do it. <laughs> so that is uh, four plus six for the one, and then divine smite damage of uh, eleven. So that's twenty-one total. Uh, eleven 21 total. Radiant. Eleven radiant. Oh wait, sorry, that's three d eight. Okay, 23 total. 23 total, okay. All right. <clears throat> Luckily, Udagas had kind of revealed itself a little bit as the tentacle was sliding off to Voss. You just stab down with your spear into it. The <clears throat> detonation of radiant light comes out of it. Udagas recoils. The entire form of this beast kind of rises in the air momentarily, then sets back down, rumbling the ground. Bits of rock fall down from the ceiling. You are nothing. Anything else your turn, Gar? Uh, well, I'm going to use my other attack and uh, 21. Okay, that hits. Absolutely. Okay, so yeah. Uh, also going to... Ooh, that was a good one. Use Divine Smite on that one. And that okay. was... Uh, uh, 17 Radiant and uh, 9 uh, regular Piercing. So 26 okay. total. All right. Your response to that is just to stab your spear in again into this mass and another, <laughs> this time louder, brighter. The entire cavern fills momentarily with radiant light. This horrible and... comes out of the ghost. Who's nothing now? Jackass. <laughs> hey, what's your turn? <laughs> That's it. I don't have bonus actions. Just have okay. smack his ass actions. Oh, and I'm slightly <laughs> gonna move. Slightly gonna move a little bit. Just make sure oh, that uh, I can uh, give Lamel Thune that oh. uh, plus five. Oh, that's an five. attack of opportunity. Okay. Yeah, I am attacking you, Gar. Go for it. Opportunistically. <laughs> Opportunistically. Uh, I am going to use booming blade action as I have that feature. Can't. Do that as a reaction, can you? If you're a war you magic, he, he, ha he has Warcaster. Holy shit, that's cool. He has Warcaster. That sucks. I love it. Uh, 21 hit? 21 does hit. Uh, 1d8. No, no, that's wrong. Okay, minimum damage. 1d6. Plus 1d8. In your, well, I say minimum damage. You're going to take 1d8 now, and since you're moving... You're going to take another 2d8. Uh, so uh, does seven. that actually count because I'm moving you know, as yeah, the action? Yeah, he would take it the next, like, so the, technically the next time he moves because the okay. moving away is what triggers the attack. Yeah, so if he just moves yeah. only that five feet, then, which he did, then it will trigger the next time if he moves away. Okay, so seven points of da more damage. Okay, that's fine. Uh, at the end of Gar's turn, we would also use another legendary action to... Do a tentacle slam down on, or to, I'm sorry, yeah, to use a tentacle slam down on him. <clears throat> uh, 18 to hit you, Gar. Alrighty. Seeker, it is your turn. <laughs> I said I would take care of this, and I will. 
<clears throat> the secret activates <laughs> form of dread <laughs> and then swoops over. Is it uh, free to switch places with a willing ally? Uh, yeah, we'll say we'll say that. Okay, then I'm moving where Yane is and move them uh, one step diagonally back. I kind of like shoulder past claw okay. on them and just shove them out of the way. And in the same motion, that claw is descending on Devok's face. I'm using my boost. As a melee attack, I'm going to go ahead and assume that a 26 hits you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You take exactly five points of damage, and you get advantage against your next saving throw. Make that save now. Oh, I get to make it now. I That's claw, cool. like, right across your face. Yes, as you have, t as you have just taken damage, you get to make the saving throw. All right, and, and I get a saving throw. I'm great at these, I swear. Um, <laughs> uh, wisdom, please go. Oh! I have a, I have a weird question. Uh, you have right, advantage, I get advantage, my I get dude. advantage, I get advantage, I get advantage. And you still have the plus five for me? That was my and question. And you have a plus oh. five. I do. Okay, all right. So I didn't move too far away from you. What was the highest one? Come on, man. Okay. Nine. Was plus the highest five. one? I am using the character boost. Votes, coat, yeah, yeah. Well, no, hold on. I don't know if I can. Yes. Because yes. I don't know if it's worth it. Nine yes. plus five. You are mind controlled. 14. It's never going to get I will. More I will remind you, your last roll was a 14, and that failed. Yes. You also have a plus five for me so now. We don't, you don't, you don't know how the much. DC is. You don't, yeah, don't you don't know what the DC is. You don't have a much, but a 14 fails. Okay, what's, what's the, what's the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, fuck, what am I trying to say? Inspiration from the fans. What is, what is that roll? Uh, a, a D6. So I'm sorry, a, from the fan, sorry, from the fans is a, another D20 roll. Sorry. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on. Oh shit, can I, can I just do that? Well, John, John, I just, I just want to reiterate something because I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it was said. I know. It, remember, with your plus five from Gar, you are at fourteen right now, right? Like that's what you're saying. You rolled a nine. Yeah. So plus five, you're currently at fourteen. So even. Right. Okay. So if you're able to roll a d6, that could at least pop. Like, get you, you know, with it. You're in a good spot, is what I'm trying to say. Like, we can we can make this work. Uh, uh, okay, let's or, try and make it work. We'll get, or or if you do the re-roll, you get two more dice rolls because it's re-rolling the roll. You already have an advantage right now. Eh, that feels really gamey, DM. How's that sit with you? It, it, it would just be one more roll. Just one more? Okay. Yeah, it would be one more roll. Just one more. Not, not, to, not to be, like, that just, like, uh, uh, feels... You are doing this on my turn, boy. Move it along. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, much better. That's a 20. Plus 5, 25. That absolutely does succeed. <laughs> that, okay. Let's do that. That, that just, oh, it felt almost says that there was a mass just on the outside of your head, just kind of guiding these actions. It would look as if you were looking through your own eyes, but not driving your own body. But you just pull up the axe, you go to slice down on your knee again, and just halt. There's a brief pause. Devok's breathing heavily. And he wheels about on Udagas, ready to strike. Udagas! I want you to keep the scar from those claws across your face, boy. I just saved your ass. Well, yeah. That was my <laughs> bonus action. Now, for my action, I am going to like turn on one knee, wheel to the floor, and then feed sweet, sweet Akima a potion. Okay, uh, if it's a regular healing potion, it'd be 2d4 plus two. That is a total of three, three, that's eight hit points. That's the best I can do for That's you. That's not bad. That's not bad. Lovely. You um, are back up to eight hit points. You were still prone on the ground because you were unconscious, uh, but you have eight hit points now, so it's mm -hmm. better than zero. Sayana like doesn't even take a breath. Her eyes just open, and she kind of flails a little bit on the floor as she tries to regain her composure. I've got, like, one hand on the back of her neck as I feed it to her, and I just kind of rise, and I'm like, Sayana. You want your violence to have value, you must give it purpose. There is your purpose. Kill it. 
She nods. Okay. Anything else on your turn, Seeker? That's it. <clears throat> it is Yune's turn. Uh, Yune, having just been struck uh, by Devok, but now seeing that he's kind of, eh, okay, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, back up 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way back to kind of uh, this pool of water uh, that had been here to make sure there's some uh, range here. Uh, and then they will uh, attack twice with uh, their longbow. Double check something really quick on their long Oh, hold on. Shit, she might not want to do that. They. Or they, they he, yeah. Uh, they might not want to do that. Um, they would know about my ability, and it's still active. Uh, United did not get Booming Blade, I don't think. She did. I action surge of Booming Blade. They did. Or, yes, kidding. Fuck. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then they will not move, and they will stay right there. That I didn't. I didn't think you booming blade uh, on that. Okay, perfect. No problem. They'll stay there, uh, and they will shoot twice uh, from uh, their bow, uh, the Pathfinder, and uh, one of them will be uh, the called shot they have as part of their ability at, from the bow, the Pathfinder, uh, a star I shot. Know. Fuck yeah. So that will be. I'm not, I'm not going to use Udagas to die for these attacks. I'll <laughs> use uh, Steve's die he gave me a long time ago. Sharpshooter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sharpshooter still rolling hot, man. Oh no! <laughs> I love it. We love that. To is see a, that is a that is a 27 to hit Udagas, which definitely that, hits. That die hey, earned that name uh, fair. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's also sneak attack damage. Uh, so that would be very high rolls. Uh, 17 points of damage. Uh, which is that amount done to him. Uh, and then Udagas must make a uh, constitution saving throw. Which he succeeds. Uh, you see Yune kind of for the first time pull an arrow, not shoot, and what comes out of it is just a moat of light that streaks across the entire form of Udagast, and you all have to kind of avert your gaze and squint as this detonation of light goes off. Uh, and then the second attack will be pretty good. Uh, 22 to hit, which does hit. So that will be not sneak attack, just regular damage. But max damage uh, for 13, po more, 13 more points of damage. Okay. Uh, that is uh, and the bonus action. Uh, you Nothing with bonus action on this turn. Well, actually, I think you may have a potion. You may want to quaff the potion. So it'll be 2d4 plus 2. Uh, eight, 8 points of healing. All right. <clears throat> that is Yane's turn. Sayana, it is your turn. You have 8 hit points, and you are prone on the ground. It was muted. Um, it takes an action to get up, or does it take a movement? Uh, just half your movement to stand up. All right, sounds good. She's going to use half her movement to stand. Um, and then Sayana is going to, <laughs> for the first time, you guys, in the entirety of this campaign, um, she's going to cast Healing Word on herself. Oh, what the my fuck? God. You take that back right now. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, you can do that the entire time? Just to remind you, because it has been a whole campaign, that is a bonus action to cast. 
And if you're casting at first level, it is 1d4 plus your spell casting modifier. Indeed. Just go ahead and roll. Um, her hand starts to glow and it kind of flickers in and out as if the, this is the first time in the campaign she's ever cast such a spell. Um, and that's going to, let's see. What do I get here? Six points of health back. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah, for the first time. I keep on refer. My mind keeps on referring back to the medical what now meme. (laughs) No, we've been (laughs) spamming in chat the entire season. (laughs) Here we go. Um, As for her action, she's actually going to cast blight on Udagast. Okay. He's going to have to take a Constitution saving throw. Okay. That's a fail. That's an eleven. Woo! All these d eights I get to roll. I That's love thirty when you points get to of damage. Oh, 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 what? Right. Oh my god! Oh, so you said how much? Thirty points. 30. Whoa! For the record, oh. Sayana looks pissed. She's silent, am, but she's mad as all hell. I am so happy so, you didn't use that. So me. Sayana, Thank you. Sayana stands up and. The first couple of words out of their mouth uh, are uh, celestial in nature, but you can't quite make them out. And a slight glow kind of leaks out of her mouth and finds its way and kind of imbues her purplish spirit that makes up her armor. But then she looks up, looks at the form of Udagast, and just raising her battle axe towards him, this almost cloud of darkness seeps out of it and expands out towards Udagast as it does, you see kind of where your mind would not be able to quite make out this form, it starts to take a little bit of shape, and you see bits and pieces, and you hear the sound of Mm. hunks of mucus just falling on the ground, diseased and disgusted as a mighty blow has been struck. You actually get a little prickle in the back of your mind, Sayana, as you hear Udagast say, you are to be my next victim. All right. Anything else for your turn? Um, I'm going to actually take my movement, the last half of it, and uh, sure. go about 15 feet back. <laughs> okay. No, no reason at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> None. Okay. Thank you, dude. Uh, it is Lair's turn. Uh, and the lair uh, Udagast will slam a tentacle in the ground uh, and kind of that same uh, light that looks like almost like an ore vein traveling to the ground this time it ripples into the rip that terror in reality next to him and as it does it flares up again everything starts to feel as it's being moved sucked towards the flare everyone needs to give me a dexterity saving throw I'm going to make a reaction uh, okay. I, I reach out and I am going to grab uh, Yane and Devok, and I'm going to okay. raise a rib cage around us with spare bone. Okay. So there's a wall uh, anchored to the floor. Okay. Uh, go ahead. You guys can give me the check with advantage, then. I was just saying, kind of, the, the bone itself that was actually being pulled as well. So you kind of use it to help brace yourself, and maybe uh, help plant your feet in. All right, twenty-three. Uh, thank, thank you for advantage. That's a seventeen. Uh, the twenty-three is a success. Uh, seventeen is a failure. Ah! <laughs> yeah, roll much higher than that. Oh no! Oh, okay. Sayana so saves. Um, 21. Wait, okay. hold on. That's a, that's a uh, Duvok, you're forgetting, plus 5. So that's 22. Oh, 23. That 22. will succeed then. Okay, thank you. Uh, tw- 21. Ooh. That succeeds. Um, Oh, I got a 19. That is a failure. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, and I'll do this one last Bless roll you. for you, Nay, before they take over, because Ambrose has joined us. Uh, you may got a 20, that was a success. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, so Lamalfoon is the only one affected by this. Uh, well, 
Well, nothing's going to get stolen. Yeah, I've got. We've got. Uh, Zolan Fires. Remind me, we have the boost, so I'm going to use the boost from Zolan Fires if that's uh, okay. Steve, did it. you put the plus five in there? No, I didn't know if I was still near you or not. Yeah, I was specifically moved within ten feet of you for you to get that plus five. Okay, perfect. Then twenty-four. Yes, that's all right. So you'll, everyone succeeds. Okay, sorry, uh, sorry. So you, so you, but you are so all the successes, which is all of you, are moved fifteen feet towards this. So I'll move you all. Uh, and take half of half of eleven damage, which is five. Half of eleven, which is five. Okay. Uh, that's bludgeoning damage for those friends. My click and resistances. My click and mouse got got <clears throat> got a little a little hazy there. I went to like seven. I'm like, no, oh, calm down now. Uh, as the as everything just kind of is thrown up, pulled in, bits of stone and bits of the wall, and just everything is just sucked in. Some of the water from the pool is pulled into this, and you see it kind of, it, it moves as if it would kind of, you know, fall into like a cup or something be poured in. But as instead it kind of looks, it just starts to swirl as it hits that tear. And then it turns, and then it starts to move between all the shapes of water. It freezes, it liquefies, it turns into vapor. Uh, that's the layer's turn. It is now Udagas' turn. Can't fucking stand this dude. Udagas. Will cast a spell. <laughs> oh, he's casting a spell, Lamalthun. Don't you have Mage Slayer? I do. Slap his ass! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get him. Slap it his slimy ass. Every time off. someone casts a spell. Well, I, I, I apologize. I was hearing things. Uh, it was not spells. It was diseases and things like that. So that's on me. Apologies. When the creature is make a concentration check, you have a damage concentration disadvantage. Nope, that's not it. Where's it? Mage Slayer does allow you to do that. Take a attack of opportunity. Okay. Like and that's I... a creature that is casting a spell. Then yes, yeah, so I use my reaction to smack him upside the head. All right, give me the attack roll. And as a point of order, I don't know if he is Udagas is exempt from this, but normal creatures do have to make a Constitution saving throw to keep the spell they're trying to cast if they take damage. Yes. Well, it's a, they, they make a check to maintain concentration on the spell to maintain concentration on Mage Slayer that... interrupts casting. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. Yes, it was, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Shut up, <baby. laughs> When a creature within five feet of you cast a spell, you can use your yeah, reaction yeah. to make a melee weapon attack against that creature. When you damage a creature that is concentrating on a spell, that creature has disadvantage on the saving throw it makes to oh, maintain its concentration. Yeah, yeah, it does not, yeah, it does not interrupt the spell. You also have my advantage apologies. on saving throws against spells cast by creatures within five feet of you. Um, I got a 16 to hit. Uh, 16 barely misses. Um, I, um... In full disclosure, I assumed that it did, so I used one of Stolen Fires' uh, re-rolls, because there's no way I could get worse than a 6, uh, and I rolled a 3. Um, so I rolled lower on that, so I burned a <laughs> Stolen Fires thing. So... Hey! Right. Uh... Okay. Uh, so then the spell goes off. Uh... <laughs> yes, everyone help. Thank you. 30 foot cone. Uh, cone starting from here. That's wonderful. Gar, your name, Seeker, and Cyanna. I need you to please make a wisdom saving throw. This cone requires line of effect, yes? Okay. 
Like, it wouldn't function through a wall. <laughs> like, like, if he cast this at the wall of a cave, and I was on the other side of the cave, it wouldn't affect me, would it? Say no. Okay. I'll say no. I'll say I'm the no. only one in the bubble, so. Okay. Nobody so else gets Yine that advantage. Yine, Gar, and Cyan are stopping it in a little bit. 22. 22. Oh, snap. Jinx, you owe me a soda. <laughs> Those both succeed. So many sodas. <laughs> don't forget your plus five, Yine. I don't think it'll matter. No. I rolled a nat one. No, you have stolen fire's bonuses. That's true. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Use, use them. that. You have them. two of them. You have two re rolls. Okay, good. Because I thought Ember was got three. Patty, do you want to? Uh, no, Patty got three. Oh, take Patty over got my three. dice again. I was rolling sharpshooter for you. Like I told, I guess at the beginning of the stream, I'm gonna play you as best as I can and pump out damage and blah blah. blah. So I was rolling more of my best d20s for you, I and mean, it was rolling pretty good. And then I come back and roll again. <laughs> I rolled a 10 that time, plus 14, or not plus 14, a 10 plus 4 for a total of 14. Plus 5. Plus 5, total plus of 19. Five. 19. Total of 19. 19 succeeds. Oh, thank Hell you. yeah. So the fear spell goes off, but luckily none of you are affected by it. You steal yourself having, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're not truly used to this you know, abomination, this eldritch horror, but... No. I'm immune you to fear. Steal yourself from fear. We, cause, cause we're gaming, boys. <laughs> uh, Don't call us, boys. Mm. Okay, Tabak, it is your turn. Fair, fair. That's a fair. Assessment. I will accept bitches. Bitches is okay with me. Uh, bitches. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. All right, I cool. gave you permission bitches. this once. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. So, uh, bro, what am I gonna do? I got all my stuff recharged. Uh, because Udagas is a very kind master. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a total of 30 feet. And be on the other side of this Eldritch War, and he's going to pull out his axes, bloodied with the, bloodied with the entrails of his friends. And he's going to just clench them as tight as he can. His fingers almost going numb on them. And he's just going to like run and jump and just, you will not fuck with my head. And he, <laughs> he just some attack rolls. And uh, he's gonna do that thing. Yeah. All right. Let's, 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 let's do some attacks. Uh, uh, that's not gonna hit. So that's a reroll. The mouth food under his breath. No, that is my job. Uh, <laughs> funny. Uh, all right, me. so this is Booming Blades. We are going to do 1d6 plus 5. That's 8 plus another d8. I don't think he's going to move anywhere just yet, but eh, whatever. Uh, two points, and then I get to know a melee attack because I did a cantrip. That's going to be a 17. Well, what, was the damage from, what was the damage from the first one? Uh, I will have to look it up. It should be in the log here. Or no. Game lock. Uh, all right. So to damage eight plus. Okay, so we got ten points all the other. Okay. For the first right. hit. Um, right. Second hit. Seventeen to hit. That hits. <laughs> yeah. uh, this makes me happy. Uh, all right, so we got 1d6 plus 5 again, so that's a total of 7 damage on okay. the second hit. Um, and then I am going to action surge, because he gave me all this shit back, thinking I was this puppet. So let's do that, shall okay. we? Uh, so another booming blade hit. Ooh, that's good. 26. That absolutely hits. Oh, that's minimal damage. 
uh, six plus seven, so fourteen. Thirteen. Thirteen damage. Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen. Excuse me. Uh, and then I get another attack because it casts a cantrip. Oh, I really want to crit on a nineteen. Uh, Twenty-seven to hit. Absolutely hits. Uh, uh, ah, what is up with minimal damage? Six. Um, so that's, that's my two actions. Well, uh, I'm sorry, what's the get, damage on it? Uh, let's go back to the game launch, shall we? Uh, where did I find? I found the game log here. Okay, there it is. Uh, it was six points. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, so... And then... I get a bonus action attack. Wait, no. No, that's not. Okay, no. Um, Alright. In that case, I think I am going to use my. Uh, let me just make sure I can use it. Apologies. Uh, that's a bonus action. So, never mind. Alright, we're good. Okay. <clears throat> Devok, as you take your two axes, half and sorry. Rank I, Rancor and Tranquility. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm just just as a point, I'm gonna leave both of them inside. Who guys? Sure. <clears throat> you half rancor and tranquility. And just oh! <laughs> just start slamming down with them, just into the area you know that Udagas takes. And the last, after the last two slashes end, you leave the axes in. All of you hear this sickening. <laughs> and you see one tentacle has fallen onto the ground. Udagas lets out this mighty bellow. You feel as if though maybe another rip in time and space might happen. Another reality bend. That's how powerful this roar is. No! You mortals! think you can bend something that is before time. You are but hands that have been around since before gods walked this earth. You think nothing. You are nothing. Nothing! And as he does that, the sh kind of you are able to take in more and he seems to be a slightly less imposing but you notice that the water has started to swell up out of all of these pools, especially the large one that the waterfall is falling into. Everything starts, more and more water falls, and you, it's actually up to about your ankles uh, high in this room now. We will show you the divinity of mortals! At the end of Devok's turn, Urugas will let out a frenzy of attacks. As expected. One against Devok, one against the Malfoon. Because you were too close to it. Hit me! Devok, that is a 25. Damn, you're wrong, good. Yeah. The Malfoon is a 19. No. Take 15 points of damage, Devok, as Ulugas' attacks seem more uncontrolled, more vicious, but he definitely seems to have freed himself up to more attacks. Lamalthoon. No, I'm sorry. Yes, Lamalthoon. You had that, I had you mark that disease. Mm hmm. You find so, yourself, as you take a breath in, <clears throat> it doesn't seem to do anything for you. And you feel your skin oozing out of it is that same mucus-like substance that you've seen everywhere in this entire layer. And you feel as if though you're being called into the water.
Uh, Umafu, uh, no, not Umafu. Devaki, did you give me a constitution saving throw as well? Alright. Does the 16 succeed? <clears throat> Just barely. Oh, hell yeah. You are fine. Uh, Lamalthoon, here's your turn. So I have to go to the water? No, you don't have to, but you find yourself trying to breathe in and you're not able to breathe in any air. Uh, the start of your turn, you take eight acid damage. Okay. Um, all right. I am going to fight through the pain as I gurgle and just this this mucus, you know, fills up my throat. I'm just like choking and spitting it up, and it, you know, it's running down my mouth, burning. I'm assuming um, these kind of caustic burns. Um, but I'm going to take my hasted action, so I'm going to uh, ignite the rapier with the green flame and come in for the first attack. Okay. Which is a 22 to hit. That absolutely hits. Okay. So, he takes 10 piercing. Okay. He takes... Four force. Okay. Um, and four fire. Uh, the fire, you know, wraps around him a little bit, but doesn't seem to be as effective. Okay. And then kind of like, you know, retching from uh, the mucus, uh, kind of, you know, pull the, um, of course, I just remember I could have done something, pull the blade back, um, and go in for my second attack with my haste. Okay, go for it. Um... I'm going to use Stolen Fires as his second boost on me. Well, what'd you roll? A 14. Okay, that does miss. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. So is AC change then, Patty? I just want to make sure you guys are getting all your hits that you can. Fair enough. <sighs> 14. It does not hit, unfortunately. Okay, uh, so I miss my second attack. Okay. Um, uh, still the bonus action, I believe. How far away is this water? Uh. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 25 feet away. 30. You know what? I'll, I'll do a round. Um, I, have a, I have an idea of what's going to happen if I stay close to a buddy of mine. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, no bonus action. Um, I'll just kind of save it, and uh, yeah. I'm good. Okay. Uh, at the end of your turn, you guys can use another legendary action to use another uh, tentacle slam down on you. That is 25 to hit. Shield, no. Okay. Uh, and shield then... Shield goes off. So the shield is my reaction. Fuck! Okay. Alright. Yep. <clears throat> Alright. Alright. <clears throat> uh, Gar, it is your turn. 
Uh, Gar is going to once again try and slap uh, a tentacled bastard. All right. Uh, does a 21 hit. 21 does hit. Okay, one more time with uh, three or a second level uh, the, the Divine Smite. That's okay. uh, 12 plus 12, 24 total. Okay. And, uh, ooh, it's even better. Uh, 25 to hit. Yep. And uh, Gar is going Please. to actually, oh, sorry. Gar is going to use a bonus action to do a harness energy or harness power, which basically lets me take one of my uh, channel divinities and turn it into a second level spell slot so that I can make that second level divine smite again. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Do it. And oh hot damn. Okay, uh, 13, <laughs> 13, 21 on the radiant, and uh, that is uh, 12 more damage on the, the regular attack, so 33. Okay. And uh, that's my action. Okay. Two more detonations of radiant energy go go off as you stab your spear into the form that is Rudagast. And you've done a significant amount of damage between all of you. But all that you have to show for it is one tentacle on the ground and Udagast's increased fury. As a free action, yes. is Udagast below half health? No. Okay. Anything else your turn, Guard? Oh, no, that's it. That was both actions and bonus action. Wait. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at the end of your turn, Gar, uh, Udagast will uh, strike down on you. I've been, you just done all that damage to him. Give me one second, Patty. I apologize. Sure. I, I, I'm going to look up some information here that might be relevant. Is like it a an effect? Would it affect me hitting Gar? Yes. So he's going to... It should have affected every attack. Um, but both of my axes are buried in him. I don't know if this is cumulative or not. That's up to you. Um, but he... If one axe is buried in him, he gets negative two to ability checks, and both of them are there. And say attack rolls and saving throws. Uh, okay. Holy shit! You just give him a persistent minus four. That's that's up to Patty. Like it's negative two, just baseline. If both of them are in there, I don't know what happens. Uh, no, no. So the way it, the way it works uh, is both axes have to be in for it to have negative two. Okay, so they are. So if the axe is hit. That's delicious. So both the axes have to be in for that negative two to work. Holy okay. moly. Cool, they're there. Oh, I think I just glitched out there for a second. You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Okay, yeah, it's, it's saying my internet connection is unstable. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Please don't. Uh -oh. The dimensional rift. It's kind of freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> We can still hear you. <laughs> oh no! If that helps. No, oh, no, he's standing rose. perfectly still. Oh, not anymore. Are you fucking kidding me? God damn it! No. It's a hell of a time to have that happen. Oh right. no! Uh, if he's not back in 15 minutes, we're legally allowed to leave. This is true. <laughs> wait, wait, we are if legally, we're legally allowed... allowed to leave. That means that we can live. Right. That means we we're allowed. legally allowed to live. Oh, we're I'm going to say we're legally to, allowed to just start taking over out. the DM spot. Uh, oh. Okay. There he is. So he's he's back. He's back. Patty? Patrick? Oh, no. And now I'm okay. the dungeon master. All right, everybody. Udagas was about to come down and smash Gar, but um, 
Devox axes have created this negative two. Our DM has some connection issues. It is about a, it is a little bit early. It's 10 minutes before 11.30. How about we take the break and see if we can get Patty back and yeah. see what this attack does to Gar? Uh, it's not a bad idea. Uh, everyone okay stay. Still, or we can just, we can just decide. I'm, John, the DM roll. I'm, the, I'm just <laughs> the DM now. Congratulations, <laughs> Udagast is dead. Everybody, well done, everyone. Everybody, um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up now. Oh, uh, wait. wait, no, are we? Is he back? Uh, I don't. I, uh, I don't know. He is. Daddy? Yay! I don't know why my my I've never had a problem with my internet ever before. I'm so it's sorry. It's because you're killing the party. So the internet <laughs> had to die too. <laughs> I guess. Did you hack Patty's internet? Of course I did. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I don't know how much you heard, uh, but uh, the way I just the way I designed them, especially because I've written if the axe is hit a target, it's both axes need to be in the target for the okay. effect to apply. Perfect, and they are there now. Okay, so, so the yeah, effect so be a minus two, and which is good. Uh, so that makes it that a... Yes, Steve? I'm just going to say, because you were cutting out, I'm just going to tell everyone watching, we will obviously not be taking our break right now. Patrick has returned, and we're going to jumping right back yes. into the fight. So stay tuned, <laughs> our break will come a little bit later. And you guess it uh. in that last session. Uh, <laughs> so, uh... Come on, there we go. Uh, so that's good, because that brings that attack down to a 22. Does that hit you, Gar? Oh yeah, twenty-two hits. Damn. Okay. All right. Thought I, thought I was doing good. <laughs> Take fifteen bludgeoning damage as the tentacle slams down on top of you. I don't have a reaction. God uh, damn it. Okay. That was. Another con throw. Uh, yes, and a constitution saving throw. Yes. Uh, you, is this for disease? You're welcome. It is for disease. Which are you? Immune. Have you reached the immune part? Okay, so that's that's paladin, level three now. That's level three okay. now. That's that's baby. That's baby's first that's paladin baby stuff. First palatining. <laughs> okay. You feel this kind of the the slime of the tentacle kind of seep into you a little bit, but uh, the divine might of uh, Madriel protects you. Uh, that's, it, that was after Gar's turn, so it's Seeker's turn. Seeker Pajat. Uh, boy, oh boy, is this a bad position we're in. I have reason to believe that the creature is going to do that vortex suck thing again, yeah? Potentially. Okay. Uh, if, while moving, I pass through a friendly square, can I do an acrobatics check to just not body check them? Uh, no. Uh, to move through, if you, as long as you don't end your turn in, to move through a friendly square... Uh, does not cost me extra movement or anything. Like oh, fucking, that's delicious then. Never mind. Um, seeing as things are dire and your girl has to get her kill on, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to spend half my movement. One, two, three. Uh, I'm going to use my free racial speed boost. Four. Out to here. Actually, this thing has reach. I'm going to go out to here. I'm going to cast a spell. Okay. Uh... I take a, a handful of ash and bone, scatter them about me, and then from just these little seeds of teeth that sink into the ground, full skeletons spurt forward. I am conjuring 1d4 plus two of them for a total of <laughs> six skeletons rise from the ground. Okay. Uh, if you can scatter them out at least 15 feet away from the beast. You say 1d4 plus what? Plus two. I got a max roll, baby. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Okay. There's your six skeletons. And then as a bonus action, I just raise my hand. Each of them has a, a pair of arm bones that flip outward with a string of tendon between them. They draw their own fingertips back, and every single one of those skeletons is going to fire an arrow. Okay. <laughs> they have a That's plus awesome. seven to hit. I will give you six attack rolls. Perfect. 
That is 22. Hits. That is 14. That will miss. That is 17. I'll hit. 26. That hits. 20 even. That hits. One, two, three, four. Is that five or six? That was five. And then the last, 13. That will miss. So How many hits, hits do I got? Four hits. Four All hits. right. Four hits. I love rolling a lot of dice. Do you all know that? <laughs> There's nothing better. I love the werewolf system for that. It's amazing. Three, four. Oh, baby. And I love rolling big. Did y'all know that? <laughs> um, that is... Give me the total damage for all the arrows. I will. Give me just one second. Thank you. These are all necrotic damage. Okay. Um, and so they are going to deal... Math is happening. Sorry. Yeah, math. 13, 13 Calculate. 12, 11, Calculate. 26, uh, 30, 30, what? Give me I'm one good. second. I'm sorry. It's a lot of math. That is 9 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A total of 58 points of damage. What okay. the fuck? And then my skeletal army collapses. Oh my god. Holy shit, that was amazing. I mean, that was max. As the I volley finished. of arrows flies into Udagast, <clears throat> peppering him, let's have another terrible shriek. It would appear you have reached the halfway point on his health. Shit, I only took everything we got. God damn. <laughs> wow, this is real. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> Anything else on your turn, Seeker? Yeah, I finish my movement up beside Utagas, and then pulling close to the beast in my form of dread. I am going to use my bonus action to make an offhand attack with my claw glove. Okay. Uh, you said the Nat skeletons 20. go away at the end of your... Nice. Nice. You said the skeletons oh, went away, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, your... I, choose, I choose to stop concentrating on them. Okay. All right. That is a natural 20. Thank you for the fucking boost, Claire. They are dust, and to dust they shall return. All right. Grand total of... <laughs> and then oh, I, I step forward this. with my blood covered blade and I just lash into it aiming for the eyes that is a total of um is that plus 4 12 uh, 46 more points of damage <laughs> that's a 90 point turn over probably Jesus and I am going to take 10 points of bleeding backlash from that. Okay. I need wow. I need oh. the Abeleth to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my gods. Pretty high. Whoa. Uh, right? It's Fuck exceeds. yeah it is. It uh, is not okay. afraid of my form of dread. Okay. I bled off all of my I extra would, health for that attack. <laughs> I would like to echo Lupine Vendetta's um, sentiment in chat. Metal as fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> hell I yeah! Do it again. I'm out of spells. I wish I could do it again. Okay. We are at the top of the next round, but we will take a quick break. Uh, just a real quick 10 minutes, maybe not even the full 10 minutes, because, uh, you know, there is some wrap up we need to do after this battle concludes one way or the other. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Uh, 10 minutes or less. Uh, we'll be right back here to continue the finale of Draco Genesis Season 2.
Welcome back. Let's not waste any time. Get right back in it. Top of the round, Yune, it is your turn. Oh boy. Well, I'm gonna go with the classic distance stabby. Range stabby. Okay. Ever classic. Knives on sticks, I like it. Give me an attack roll. Okay. Twice of it. And that then. Me. 18. That hits. Excellent. Now the damage bits. That's 13 really for the first one. Like 13 hit. <laughs> or thir- sorry, 13 damage. Yes, yes, yes. And 12 damage for the second. Well, for the second. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, both arrows sink into Udagast. Uh Anything else to do on your turn? Uh, mm-hmm. How many? Wait, let me see my spells real quick. Because I think. I think that. Where's my multiply missile? Oh, okay. Uh, I would like to Wait, add multiply mic. missile to my next arrow that I use. Okay, I so it's bonus action your turn. So on your bonus action this turn, uh, you cast multiply missile, and then on your next attack, your next turn, uh, you'll be able to use its effect. Yes. All right, perfect. <clears throat> uh, Silent, it is your turn. Um, Sayana is going to go ahead and reposition herself behind Mount Um, uh, but still quite a ways away from Udagast. Um, yeah. and she's going to once again cast Blight, and he will need to make another constitution saving throw. Okay. With that fucking minus two, baby! Hell yeah! Uh, that, I'm going to use one of the many boosts I have to reroll that. Fair. <laughs> That's much better. Uh, that will be a 19 total after the minus and his pluses and all that jazz. That passes, so he'll take okay. half damage. Um, so it was a 33 at full, so that is a 16 at half? Yep, that is correct. Another 16 necrotic damage comes out. Huh. I love when numbers work out. <clears throat> all right. Uh, once again, this blast of necrotic energy r- rushes over the mass of Udagast. Uh, seem to be getting through. The uh, kind of almost looks like an illusion of how large he is. Seems to be kind of clarifying a little bit here. And the more and more you look at him, the more you're able to kind of, it's almost like putting together puzzle pieces. And you're almost you're starting to, you know, see his true form of what he actually looks like. There still is no words to describe it, but it's closer. Go Necro team! Uh, it's now the Lair's turn. Lair. Uh, the <clears throat> wind whistles inside the Lair. You all brace yourselves, thinking that is this rip going to pull us again. But instead, that kind of shimmering in the air reappears uh, around you, Seeker. I need you to give me an intelligence saving throw, please. Me? Intelligence? Yes. Yep. Fucking, all right. I'll give you an intelligence, whatever you want, Chief. And I will use my boost for it. Okay. How's a... <laughs> How's a 12? 13, 13. 13 will fail. Ouch. As, <clears throat> As one of Seeker's deepest, darkest nightmares manifests itself and it looks as if though it is right next to them. Describe what that nightmare would look like. Oh, I turn and I see myself. Eyes completely hollow, finally having lost my own control amidst all of this. 
and I see it reach out a hand for me to take me to hell where I belong. Okay. This hand reaching out, this dark form, this mirror, this mirror form of seeker, wreathed in dark energy, eyes hollow, no eyes in them, mouth agape, teeth dripping with blood. And it says... You are immune to fear, correct? I am immune to fear. Okay, so you're not frightened, but uh, you will take... (laughs) 19 points of psychic damage. It, like, racks through them. Nobody else can see this? No, it is only visible to you. Nobody else needs to know what it says, then. Okay. <laughs> All of you also notice that the water that was kind of at your ankles had been has been slowly rising still, and now it's at the base of your calves. Uh, it is now Udagas' turn. Udagas will unleash a full angry set of attacks as it's raining down these attacks on people. No, no, I have not bled in a millennia. I have not had to resort to this ever. Not ready, not ready, not ready. Attack on Devok, one on Devok, one on Secret, one on, one on Malfoon, and one on Gar. One on Devok. Damn. 24. Yep. One Seeker, 22. Absolutely hits, my friend. One on the Malfoon. Uh, 21. I'm going to use one of my rolls that I have from the audience. Uh, 24. Is it... Do I have my reaction back from the last time I used shield? I don't think I've had uh, it yet. If you have no, it, it's, it's still up. It's not, it hasn't been your turn again yet. Well, then, then my Are shield's you... still up then, right? Wait, I'm sorry. Because you used it on his last set of attacks, and then your turn was after him, no. so it has been you. No, the... I have not had a turn since I used shield. So okay. You see from shield. So it would still, still be out. Okay. Then no. Okay. Uh, and then Gar. That's a natural twenty. All right. Damage for the buff. It doesn't matter. I'm down. Okay. Uh, just. For funsies, it was <laughs> 19 damage. Yep. Damage. <laughs> damage for Seeker. 20 points of bludgeoning damage. It shatters the bone armor that I'm wearing, and it falls to dust around me. Huh? But I'm actually not hurt by that. That was all temp HP, baby. Okay. And then the crit on Gar. 38 points of bludgeoning damage. Fucking hell, dude. Ooh. All right. I'm finally below half. <laughs> you are ridiculous. <laughs> right? Fucking tank. And well, Devok, as, it is, he's been, as, he's as been hitting Devok, us the most with deck spaced, so I've been good. As Devok gets his tentacles slamming onto him and he falls over unconscious the last thing he thinks is I hope they drag you to hell with me and he falls he falls down and I'm assuming you're going to say make a death saving throw that is correct sir okay alright let's do Oof. it <sighs> oh that's a 10 that is Mark one success. That is a success. Uh, 
at, at the end of Devok's turn, uh, Udagost will use a legendary action and perform a slam attack uh, on the Seeker. Hit me! I'm going to use one of my audience votes. Hit me, Patrick! Hit me! For 25 to hit. I love the pain! How much do I take? <laughs> 16 points of bludgeoning damage. I don't love the pain that much. <laughs> as, the f- as the full fury of Udagash has been unleashed, not holding back anymore, realizing that even Eldritch Abominations before the time of gods bleed, apparently. Well, Malthus, when he hits your turn. me, yes. if I know I'm going to take that blow, can I turn my body so that I get his blood on my cloak from one of its injuries? Uh, sure, but you'll need to make the constitution. Regardless, you have to make the constitution saving throw. It is against Do disease. It. Yep. Uh, constitution 16 plus 319. That is a success. I like that. Got this uh, purple gunk all over my fucking robes. Mouth here at the top of your turn, you take five points of acid damage from your disease. And it is your turn. Taking the damage. Um, let's 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 start. Let's start close stabbing people, not range stabby. Close up stabby. Um. So yeah, again, kind of uh, still continue to gurgle, seeing like friends go down and all of these things, and I'm just like. You know, making all those horrific sounds. Um, I'll continue to just try to, like, I'm just up close and just taking the rapier and just, like, stabbing as anywhere that I can, trying to find an eye or just a weak point, just something. Uh, what is usually finesse is just desperation. Um, let's see. Same thing as always. Green flame and then regular. The 29 to hit. Absolutely. Fuck okay. yeah. And oh. I'll take desperation if it looks like that. One thing I can do on my turn, apologies, I didn't, don't mean to interrupt, um, is the axes are still buried in them, so he still takes 1d4. Unless that's okay. not a thing, Patty. Yes. Yeah, no? yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and roll it. Uh, roll it, uh, so that, that hits uh, Lamathu. Go ahead and roll damage. Um, well, I just went ahead and rolled my second attack just to get the attack out. Does a seventeen hit? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. And I saw that uh, Devok. That's four points of damage. Yeah. Got it. All right. So first attack does. Thirteen piercing. Okay. That's it, dude. Seven force. And three fire. Okay. Once again, it doesn't seem to be as effective. Yeah. Uh, and the second attack does eleven piercing. And four force. And two more psychic die down. Like I am I'm rolling horrific damage. Like like under threes on like all the dice. <sighs> okay, I mean that was nothing to sneeze out there. Alright. The rapier flashes back and forth. Tip or tap, tip or tap into uh, Udagast. Anything else your turn? <sighs> I'm sure this is a horrific idea. Like, I'm sure this is, this is not what I'm supposed to do, but uh, you said the water seems... 
appealing with what's going on with my mm -hmm. whatever. Um, I will bonus action Misty Step into the water. Okay. Uh, into the pool that Udagas came out of? Sure. Okay. You go in. So you I'm... find that you're able to breathe. Yep. As you, as you are in the water, you find yourself able to breathe again. Yep. Any issues okay. being in that water right away that I can tell? Nope. This the this water is like pure and clean, like it's okay. like see through almost. Okay. Mm. All uh, right. Okay. At the end of Lamalthun's turn, Udagas will use another legendary action, and uh, is uh, determined here to try to end the seeker. Does a twenty hit? Twenty does not. Hit. Okay. I will not use all my rolls. Guard, it's your turn. Uh, Gar is once again just uh, flailing and wailing since uh, uh, he doesn't see anything wrong with Lamalthun acting strange. Nothing at all. He's just acting like normal. <laughs> and I will use reroll on that one and does a 20 hit. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to use another Divine Smite because that is all I am doing at this moment in time. And it is uh, level one divine smite, so that's thirteen for uh, radiant. And damn, I am doing really good on my dice sixes. Another twelve. So that's twenty-five total. Let's go to there so I can make sure I'm taking that off because that is now all of them. Okay. This one there and. Yeah, just gonna attack him one more time. And okay, twenty one. So that's that hit two, right? Okay. Yep. And let's burn another divine smite and do terrible damage that time, but I still do max on that. So five damage for radiant and uh another twelve for uh regular damage. So seventeen total, okay. And uh okay, this is just a question for everyone. Who's got the lowest health so I can make sure to give this to them? Well someone's dead. Do I yeah, Devok is unconscious. Okay. Well, to make sure that Devok doesn't get attacked again while being unconscious, uh, he is now subject to Sanctuary. So, for the next minute, if Udugas wants to attack him, he has to make Wisdom safe. Okay. Uh, at the end of Gar's turn, Udugas will die, take damn it. another legendary action. Uh, and retaliate against Gar. Uh, that definitely missed this, so I'm going to use. I think this is my last review roll from the audience. It's, it's caught. Uh, 26 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay. 19 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, and Seeker, it is your turn. I'm going to use acrobatics. Now, if I use okay. acrobatics as part of moving, I can jump over this motherfucker. I'm absolutely sure of it. I am a cat. And I am a quick fucking cat. Uh, I'm going to say it would just be better to wheel about this, this creature as opposed to trying to jump over it. But I could. Uh... Right? Do it. Be awesome. Am, you can you can certainly try. You can if certainly I am committed. Try. All right, let me ask you a different question, Patty. Making two checks, could I jump off the creature? And go If I landed on it on purpose? To what is the end goal? Jump to the other side of it. And since it's part of my movement, 
attack it while I'm in the middle. Why did the seeker jump over the appellate? Uh, give, me give, me, give me one acrobatics check, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to use my very last boost. Okay. That is... Plus... I got a 22. Okay. Kind of as the tentacle had slammed down into the ground uh, to attack Gar, you kind of see it rising back up and you take your opportunity to kind of jump on it, hug it, and then just kind of fall on top of it, not sharing where your feet are landing, but just kind of trusting your instinct to run across it. And I will say you can get <laughs> to the other side. All right. <laughs> on the other That's side of it, there. <laughs> provoking an attack of opportunity if it wants to take one, I am casting at one very last spell. Uh, uh, you said, as long as you're staying within melee range, it will. It can't take a reaction against you. Really? Yeah, that I'm was just sure. Mage, that was hey. that was Mage Slayer. Yeah, that was Mage Slayer. That I'll uh, fucking take it then. Had. In that case. Uh, using that last spell, instead of the cool shit I wanted to do, I'm going to try and save Devok and the rest of them by casting Darkness. Okay. Like, I'm grabbing a sheet and jumping over the monster. Just leaving it shrouded. Oh, you're casting Darkness, like, on top of Udagos? Yep. Okay. It is big enough that it is the Darkness Sphere. And so as long as it stays still, it is blinded, we have advantage on attacks against it and it has disadvantage on attacks against us, unless it has like Tremor Sense or one of those other funny ones. Okay. And then using the other half of my movement. I'm gonna zip over next to Yane right here. Okay. Uh, is that it for your turn? That's it. That's all I got. All right. Back to the top of the round. Yune, it's your turn again. Hell yeah, it is. So, uh, yes, range stabby, but I have the awesomeness that is multiply missile, and I have rediscovered the fact that I have a special that once per turn, when I hit a creature with a weapon attack, the creature takes an extra 1d8 damage if it's below its HP maximum. Good job, me. Which for... it definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it is time. Unleash hell. All right, roll attack. To range stabby. A motherfucker. 17. I will hit. First one. And then... A poultry, 17. Second attack is a 29. Uh, yeah. That's Not sure. advantage against this creature. <sighs> advantage. Oh my you god. You should pull two more times and make sure you don't get oh. a 20. Oh my god. It can't see you, um, so you get your sneak attack, homie. Oh shit. I fucking That's got a... you covered. Hell what? yeah. Okay, I got this. Start, okay, roll, so. Roll your d20s first. Uh, that was another 29, and then 20. Okay, okay so, so no crits, but the, both, both attacks do hit. Uh, so the first one will have uh, sneak attack. <clears throat> oh god, I actually don't think I've ever really used sneak attack. Yeah. So... Yeah, 1d6 plus rogue level. Right? Uh, two, two, no, no, no. Uh, it's two. Four two total. Six. Four, four total on that, and then... Four total? That doesn't seem possible. I rolled a three into one. Oh, for the sneak attack. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That is so absolutely possible, attack. though. Well, I Especially thought that was the total damage me. on the attack. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> Especially when it's me rolling. So. Okay, uh, then what was the damage for the arrow? Ten. Okay. So it's 14. And then 13. So the damage for the second arrow? Yes. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. And also I have the multiply, which I get to roll two extra damage dice on top of that. Okay. So two more d8s. So that's six and that's eight. And then, and then, and then, and then, no, I did, and then, no, I did, another d8. So let's open that thing, Bob. <laughs> Three. Three more damage. All right. All right. That was pretty good. Yine is embodying the Fox Clan, silent, moving swiftly, and deadly. Excellent. I like it. All of your, uh, all of your bolts land into this monster, <clears throat> doing quite a bit of damage. All right. Uh, that water is still increasing in here. It is up to your knees, so everything is now difficult terrain here. Sayana, it is your turn. You muted, Sayana. I was indeed <clears throat> muted. Um, Sayana's going to cast Inflict Wounds at the second level. Okay. Uh, Let give me, me a spell attack roll, please. Absolutely. Ooh, a natural 20. Oh, hell. Yeah. I'm not here for it. That's fucking, that's a crit on a spell. That's insane. What the fuck? Um, second level. Oh, I didn't hear you say second level. I thought that was fourth. Increases by one. Nah, because like, Inflict Wounds does a, a good chunk of damage. Oh, I, yeah, I, so that's going to be sure 3d10. That's my bad. My bad. Oh, I like a 3d10. D10. A doubles? 3d10 doubles? That's going to be 20 points of damage. Was that oh. doubled? No, it's not doubled. That would be 40. <laughs> Sayana slipped yeah. the fire. It slapped. One of this, like almost like you're pulling on a seam. One of the tentacles just splits completely open, and just guts and in this indigo-colored ichor keeps falling out of it. It's it's mixing with the water around you. It makes everything. It was this clear water that had started flooding this area. It is now completely murky. Right. I was uh, I was that was a pretty good spell right there. Uh, anything else Sayana wants to do with their turn? That's it for now. All right, it is the layer's turn. The layer will make will cause. Uh, well, after that, will make you give me a wisdom saving throw, please, Sayana. Okay. Wisdom saving throw. Hmm. It's a 24. That succeeds, so you'll take half. As the water immediately around you kind of rises up and starts to completely engulf you, take half of 15, seven points of psychic damage. As Take just in. kind of, it just starts to permeate you, and get and just alter your psyche. It almost feels like, but you're able to shake off most of the effect. Uh, it is Uragas' turn. He is pissed. Uh, round of attacks four. Uh, let's see, me two on Gar, one on Yune, one on Lamathu. Oh shit, he's got hella reach. I was gonna say, I'm close enough for him to hit me? Yeah, because I'm moving him five over, so he's only ten away from you. Okay. Anyone get. I don't know if that counts as darkness anymore or not. I don't know how that rule works. 
I'm, I'm uh, down, so no. A part of, like, part of him would be out of it, so that, like, large creatures are weird because, like, once, like, part of them is out of an effect, it counts as them being out of it. Mm-hmm. It would still block line of sight to Devok, at least. Yes, yeah, no, he doesn't even realize Devok's there, really. That's the best I got for you, buddy. Malthoon, that is a 22 to hit? No. Guard. It's also a 22 to hit. Yes, no, maybe so? No, no, that is. That hits? Okay. Uh, I'll reroll that one against you. Uh, for a 21 to hit? That hits. Okay. And then Yune. Uh, 16 to hit. Uh. Aha! Wait. Um, my AC is 17, so. Okay, so that does miss. Uh, uh-huh. Okay, so two, just the two on guard then. First attack guard. Okay, pretty low. 13 points of bludgeoning damage. And the second attack on you. Also pretty low. 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Guard's down. Okay. Um, With the two let's... tentacles slamming down on guard. Uh, Gar, who you've seen be able to survive anything. Every encounter, he's always walked away from hardly worse. Oh, yes? Sorry, I, I just, uh, things happening very, very quickly. Um, I, I wanted to block some of that damage for Gar, um, because I know he's been taking a lot of hits. Okay. So, I did not use a shield, because I did not get hit, so I have my reaction. So, I'm, wait, no, is he within, how far away is Gar from me? Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty. Less than thirty. More than ten. Less than th- he's, he's within exactly, thirty he's feet. A, he, he's exactly thirty feet. Yeah, exactly thirty. If you take five less damage, do you stay alive? If I take five less damage, I have one health left. You don't. <laughs> you, I block <laughs> uh, using. So from the water, I take a big gulp of breath, stand back up, and I see the tentacle coming down on Gar, the one who's, you know, he's Gar. Like, he takes all the hits, and he's been getting hit, like, a ton, and, like, all that good stuff. And I just, at the last, you know, moment, I th- kind of just grab from my head, and I throw out um, a ball of uh, psychic energy that blocks five damage. I knew you still cared about me, you bastard. And I just Gar kind of clutches his spear off. Gar clutches his spear, drops to one knee, but doesn't drop any further. All right. Devok, please roll me a death saving throw. What if we just said I succeeded, though? Like, <laughs> no. Oh, you're not no. feeling it? I'm kind of feeling it. I'm not gonna lie. I You're a tough know. guy, man. You can make it. Okay, all right. I can't watch. I hear it. I hear it rolling. What is it? Oh, 19! Oh, yeah! Woo! That's a success. Okay, hey, that's two successes. He's still going. Still alive. Okay. All right, all right. Uh, also, <laughs> as the axes are embedded in Udagas about a foot apart, you just see him pulse, and these dark lines of, like, Eldritch Icker seem to decay the muscle and tissue between them and he's going to take another 1d4 of damage as Rancor and Tranquility do their work. Alright, what's that? What is the damage on that? One. Okay. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's every something. fucking it's point something. counts, right? That, that's enough, that's that's enough to take Gar down. <laughs> I am... <laughs> I am doing damage while I'm dead, motherfuckers. I'd like to see any of you do that. <laughs> At the end of Devok's turn, he does take a legendary <laughs> action to attempt to finish off guard. 22. No, 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 no. Yeah. No! Advanced- oh, no, shit, it can see you. Fuck. Gar! It's a bludgeoning damage. It doesn't even matter. You don't need to roll. It's one it, damage. Well, yeah. 
I, I, you know what? I would like to roll. Okay. Thank he you. likes rolling, <laughs> Devin. Okay. The big thing knocks you fucking down. With that slam, <laughs> Gar does finally. Blood leaking out the corner of his mouth. He falls face first into the water. <laughs> you thought me done. You thought me bested. Two of your friends down. The rest of you to go. Well, now, Theon, it is your turn. Um. I will say, he is looking pretty rough. Yeah, I am gonna go for broke here and come up <laughs> behind him out of the like again taking that breath from the water trying to wash out as much of this mucus as I can just walking up out of the crystalline water um is long now that you are out of the water take five points of acid damage that's fine the, the long, pale white hair, just like everything, is just, it's just wet, dripping, walking out, sword still in hand. And just choking through uh, the mucus. You claim to fight and kill gods. So when I kill you, I'll know that I'm capable of what I want. And I will rush, and I will strike at him. Okay. Give me your attack roll. I am using one of the several votes I know I've gotten along the way that I've never used. Okay. <laughs> to get a 29 to hit. That absolutely hits. That's it, baby. Second attack. I <laughs> fucking tonight. Um... Like I, I I don't even know how many vo- I I've never I had never used them but I won't do two in a row. Well, so what's the, what's the total? What's the total? It's thirteen. Okay, that does miss. Yeah, yeah. I'm rolling. Th I've been rolling threes all night. Like, but yeah. Um. All right. So here we go. One of those hits, which means he takes sixteen piercing. Eight force and even though I Look know at you fucking roll max. What it's the hell? doing well. I'm 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 putting out those are my high numbers. Um Cheers to you, motherfucker. Well, I appreciate you. Uh and even though I know he's resistant to it. Seven fire. Okay. Alright. Is that it? That's it. I make my statement, I come up, and I'll just run the blade in one time into his back. Um, okay. <sighs> it's looking pretty rough. <laughs> Only I get that second attack. Oh my god. I feel like Patty's saying this. Uh, we're all Gar, <laughs> like dying. Please roll me a death saving throw. <laughs> 11. That's a success, Ooh. Mark. One success. On the track. Jeez, wheezy guys. <clears throat> Seeker, it is your turn. I mean, the My reason turn. is. All right, I'm looking at the field here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At the end of Gar's turn. Oh, fuck. Ludogas will take a strike against the Malthoon. I know that doesn't hit, so I'm gonna re-roll it. So I just got a boost from Rachel. Uh. 23 to hit. Shield, no. Okay. Got him. All right. Now you can go see. I'm looking at the field. Lamalthoon just dodged what might be a fatal hit. Devok is down. Gar is down. Sion is low and slinging magic. Yane. I turn to Yane. I'm going to use a bonus action to lay my hand on Yane's shoulder and sink those claws in to get their attention. Fox focus be damned. Look at me. Stay smart. And stay alive. What, what are you gonna do? 
they shake their head. And they turn to Sayana. Sayana! And they pause for it's a second. It's double muted. Oh, Seeker. No. <laughs> they, they lock eyes and they wait for like a whole second and take a breath. And they say, Reach heaven through violence. And tell the Malthun to stop trying to kill the ocean with fire. You can do this. And then they are going to walk backwards 20 feet. 15 feet, actually. The fuck? And then without saying a word, oh, baby. No jokes. You can't even fucking see it. That's a nat 20 in the acrobatics roll. <laughs> I, I swear on every bit of blood in my body that is a nat 20 on the acrobatics roll. Oh my St Lord. Steve, you want to say it? You want to say it? I feel like it's yeah. her thing to say. Birdie. Oh. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, motherfuckers. And I do a backflip. Yes. Okay. As soon as Seeker flips into this chair, there's a brief moment where there's kind of hanging. It's kind of that little half smile at the corner of Seeker's face. You've seen them give you all a million times. Huh. They turn to mist and they're gone. Seeker. And they are out of the initiative. <sighs> Back at the top of the round, Yane, it is your turn. See, uh, Yane is kind of in shock at this point. Um, does their best to snap out of it and will. If they're still invisible, would they be? Is that a concentration thing for Seeker? Uh, I mean, you saw them enter the t that Terran reality. So it wasn't an invisibility thing. That was them. Oh, no, no, no. With, with, uh. Oh, no, um... they didn't give you invisibility. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. Well, it had given me sneak attack. Uh, you had sneak attack on Udagas because it was in the darkness for four. Oh, okay. But you would still get it now uh, because the mouth is in melee with it, so you still get sneak attack. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh... Sneak attack. Okay. Uh, roll, roll a hit. Oh, roll a hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have my... Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Twelve. Twelve does not hit, unfortunately. Damn. You have a second attack, though. I was gonna say, don't you still have bonuses from uh, Rachel? I do. That too. Okay, sneak attack. Fifteen. Fifteen just barely hits. Whew. Okay, uh, damage for Sneaky Sneak is seven. Okay. And then regular ranged stabby. Why? Oh, yeah. 23. No, so the sneak attack is part of the, of the attack. So just give me the attack, oh. just give me the damage for your normal ranged stabby attack. Oh. I'm smart. I knew that. I, I did. I was uh, testing you. I'm glad I passed. Twelve. Okay. And eleven. Yep. All right. Your name. Please describe how the best falls. 
Yine is seeing Gar down and Devok down and Lamalthun underwater? Question mark. No, no, under I'm, the sea. No, I walked. No, I'm he's under the sea. sea. I'm behind Udegas with my blade like through his back. Oh, okay. yeah. So, uh, and, and then with Seeker having just walked into the portal to goodness knows where. Yune just lets out this roaring scream of frustration and anger and sadness. Ah! And fires in quick succession. And you've never really heard Yune angry before. And as the arrows sink into Udagast, Yune goes, I hope you burn in hell. Chest heaving. The arrows find their mark in the creature. The last one piercing through the main eye I had been using to look at all of you. The body slumps into the water, splashing, making these small waves out. This indigo lit ichor freely flowing out of the creature now. Its eyes slowly closing one by one by one. The tentacles in their death throes. And you all get one little telepathic message back as it's dying. This is just the beginning. And as the last breath is exhaled from Udagast, the flames in the back of the cavern extinguish. The lightning arcing from the pillars ends. The swirling tornadoes cease. But the rip in reality expands exponentially, growing, growing, larger and larger. You can't escape it. You all turn, try to run from it but it's going to take up the whole room. Right as it's about to envelop you, you all feel a faint tugging. The hairs in the back of your neck stand up. And it's as if someone took a photo of this world and paused it. Or at least slowed it to a crawl. You see this rip still slowly expanding towards you. You're all able to move at normal speed, but this rip moves as if it's honey. You look around. Cyana, Lamalthun, you've read enough about this. You've been dragged into the ethereal. You take a survey of the immediate cavern. <laughs> Loud thundering steps. It sounds as though the earth is giving way to each of these steps. You all turn around, coming from where you had entered this cavern. A gigantic dragon. Itself ethereal. Hello, heroes. I am Melacrononus, the Shade Steer, and I am from the Dragonlands. Long ago, the gods severed the lands from the rest of Scar by removing it from the material plane. It has only existed in the ethereal for the last several thousand years. You have the unique opportunity to rectify that. Here and now we are still in the border ethereal. 
our lands have not yet slipped into the deep. If you were to reform the crystalline sphere that connects this part of the ethereal with the material, the dragon lands would be once again part of Scorn. This would bring back the dragons. The gods locked us away here in the ethereal. Still alive, unable to age, so that mortals could rebuild after the divine war on their own. Behold fantastical power, incredible technology. There are many peoples and places that exist here in the Dragonlands. But be warned, this action of yours would bring back all dragons, good and evil. Also, this would go against the will of the gods. The sudden flooding of power and magic might change things unseal certain things that were meant to be hidden away. But the choice is yours. Heroes of Elysian, do you think Scarn is ready for this? He just looks at each of you individually. Uh, am I up? Uh, yes. The both of you are at one hit point. Unconscious. So wait, are we going to be bringing Verdoop actual dragons then? Your <laughs> king has no idea what he thought he knew. The traveler who was the representative of this key to unlocking the Dragonlands didn't even know. Utagast didn't even know. By defeating him, you have created an event. By slaying this ancient power, we have reached out. It would seem that humanity, mortals, might be ready. <laughs> You're telling me the dragons will come back. This that we will be defying the will of the gods, that we will change history forevermore. Well, I'll wait for everyone here to gather their thoughts before I chime in. Mm -hmm. But I am not opposed to the idea. I kind of love it as a bit of chaos, if I'm going to be honest. Cyanna slowly shakes her head no um, and says, if the gods ban them from this world, then that's a reason that they're gone. Let them stay as that. But what is the reason? <laughs> Shade scale looks at you. The gods wanted mortals to rebuild on their own, to be able to support themselves, rediscover things without help. That is why. This is not a punishment. This was precaution. It was the worry of some of the gods that if mortals were given all of the answers, it would cripple your creativity and natural expansion. There are... Oh, sorry. Uh. 
I think that's funny, considering how... I don't know. Dragons have always been something kind of whimsical. The dragons you know of the Scarred Lands are abominations. They are titan spawn, posing as dragons. Even you do not call them full dragons. They are known as rack dragons. They are nothing but elemental terrors. What of you, Gar? What of you? Of your people. What are you? What do you say of life? The sanctity thereof. Life is different for dragons. We view mortals as interesting creatures, intelligent life, and we review and good dragons revere intelligent life. A secret. I will be honest. There are evil ones among us who view you as nothing more than food. If we brought all of you back, would you be opposed to us hunting down those ones that would treat us as cattle? To try. There would not be war, that is not how we operate. But as dragons migrated from the lands into the rest of Scar, there would be casualties. We prefer our solitude and therefore we would take up mountain peaks and under, under the seas, forbidden marshes, dangerous forests would be where we'd make our home. But for those mortals who came charging into a dragon's lair, it would be their own undoing. If I ask a request of some of you, would you be able to do it if we let you in? You're not beholden to agreements with mortals, but we would listen to your requests and deem them if we would want to act on them or not. I know you said mountains, but perhaps some of you that deem life of we mere mortals more sacred, you might at least make homes near us to prevent those that detest us as more than livestock at least holding our cities in higher regard against them. We would not fight your battles. A deterrent not is not a fighter. We would not be your guard dogs. Some I do not speak for all dragons. Some may even make friends of you mortals but the majority of us would want to be left alone unless we came to you. A good many of us would want to stay in the Dragonlands, just take comfort in the fact that we have rejoined the material plane. And that is... So you are caged here and you want to rejoin the material plane you want to have these shackles undone without intervention from others we yes we are stuck here in the ethereal i understand the it burn. is not truly a prison that can be sentence that can be lived out no time passes in the ethereal dragons live long lives already so we are not in danger of dying out and if you say no then 
we would understand. Perhaps in another thousand years, mortals would be finally ready. I want to choose my words carefully here. I know what it is, what it is to be bound somewhere by something that is not of your it own It kind of makes this motion where like it, its throat kind of moves and it, it, it almost sounds like it's coughing, but you can tell that it's, it's a laughing. laughing. Laughing, a little bit laughing. <laughs> yeah. You do not know a thousand years. Mm, no. That I cannot say I do. However, I would not wish it worse, worse, worse. <laughs> I would not wish this upon my worst enemy. And therefore, I do believe that you, like the gods in many ways, with all respect, underestimate the humans, underestimate mortality as a whole. And I believe that is something I can agree with many of my party on. So yes. And I believe you can rejoin us. And those that wish us ill will be corrected of their mistake. I'd like to insight the dragon, please. Hold an insight check. Eleven. Ancient, all-knowing, inscrutable. Its ethereal form, it's hard to get a read on. It seems, it seems to be telling the truth, especially because it has told you that the choice is yours. Right. And it, and it understands if you want to say no. And... He like and I can also explain. It's not like they're dying. It's not like this is a punishment. You know, they could stay here forever in the ethereal. Do you Do you know where my friend Seeker went? Cox said at you blink slowly. I am sorry, child. That rip that Udagast did. It connected to all the planes and none of them at the same time. Which is everywhere in the world simultaneously. Your friend could be back home. Your friend could be lost in the abyss. Your friend could be lost in between planes. There is no sure way to know. Thank you. And he looks at you. And he just kind of moves forward. So it gets right in your face. Even though we are old, ancient, and powerful, I have lost friends. My heart grieves for you. Um... In that moment, Sayana is going to have something of an aha moment. Um, and very quickly, she's going to cast Sending to send a message to Seeker Pajat. Uh, okay. And she says, Seeker, can you hear me? If you can, can you tell me where you are? Why did you do this? Give me a percentile and tell me if you want high or low. All right, let's see. Fifty. 
51. Um, wait, I should have said high or low first. Um, I'll do that over again. Um, I'll take high okay. and I'll go ahead and roll again. 88. Yeah. You get the feeling that your message does reach the seeker, which comforts you. At least they're alive. Whether or not you get a reply. Uh, I'm going to stand up and just kind of walk in front of the group with my back to the dragon. This is another tyrant. This is another ancient, ageless, powerful entity that admits itself it does not care for us. It would not be, it considers assisting us and protecting us, Gar, as being its, as being akin to a dog. Leave it here. Oh, yeah. You got me on this one. I don't want this guy to leave. None of them. The bad guys get to come out, but the good guys will just stay home. That's not the way it should work. You guys can happily live for your very long lives here. And in a thousand years, if you do get out, I'll make sure we're ready. I also plan to live for a very long time. He looks at Yune, Sayana, and Devak. Is this sure? sentiment as well. Sayana nods in agreement. Are you happy? I cannot lie. I do miss the feel of the sun on my face. Feeling actual wind beneath my wings as I fly. Smelling the sea. These are all sensations that you not have here in the theory. What is it like? Picture a place where time does not pass. There is no sun that rises or sets. No moon that comes out. No oceans, no mountains. Just a flat plane of existence. Everywhere you can see. That is where we are. enough to drive someone mad. May I... May I touch you? Just lowers his head. You know he's gonna reach out and touch the dragon, see what happens. Okay. Uh, as you touch uh, uh Cronodius. Take off your glove, touch. Yes. You can, feel the, you can feel the scales smooth, warm. Kind of rush, run right along. Not sharp at all. You're expecting, you know, something dangerous or harmful, but polished and sheened in a way that they do, they would offer a great deal of protection, and you can tell that these are sturdier than any plate armor in the world, but soft enough to curl up in as well. Who 
are we to even control your fate? If someone locked us in that plane because they thought that we were too much, we would object. It wouldn't be fair, it wouldn't be right. I value free will and autonomy. And I have faith that our people, though who we are, our faith, I have faith our people can manage this situation. I feel the greater sin is leaving an entire people here locked up to rot away. Though they do it themselves have admitted to not feeling it as a prison. I cannot help my own viewpoint contain it as such. And so yes, I beg to free our dragon kind. At the end of Devok's words, um, Sienna is going to actually put a hand on his shoulder and she's going to say, Devok, even if releasing them meant that your friends and family or maybe some other member of some generation in your family long, long, far from now, even if they were to die because of that, would you still do it? I would. I would because the greater sin here is to leave someone, to leave an entire people here with no respite. Mm -hmm. I would because much like he has admitted there are good beings and bad dragons, well-meaning dragons and dragons of all sorts, sizes and shapes. They do not differ, in my opinion, from the little knowledge I have and the little knowledge that has been given to me here in this conversation. That much from an everyday person. Does a person with a sword who cuts down my family member, do they mean any more to me or less to me than another person a long generation away who does not? I believe that they should be given a chance to prove them, prove what and who they are. Sayana considers this for a moment and she nods her head. And she asks the same of Gar, Lamalthun, and Yune. And what about you? My stance has been the same since anyone has met me. Mortals' lives redeemed all of those who occupy the mortal plane. We are the ones who grant power to those above. And these are locked away because they are other tyrants. I will not sacrifice the lives of friends and family and anyone who currently lives on our plane for them to feel the sun on their scales. For the people who die under their claws and under their teeth and by their breath, they'll be buried in the cold dirt by the thousands. Even though these tyrants were locked away by the very beings you yourself call tyrants. I have never once said the actions of the gods are unilaterally bad. I merely think that we should be the ones in charge. Mm. And Gar? They're not willing to reprimand their own kind when they do something which they themselves say is wrong. 
They want to stay alone. And I say we give it to them. They stay alone right where they are. Where no people will get hurt from their existence. While they stand idly by and just watch. That's worse than what Lamalthun thought of the gods. At least the gods act to help people. That's just an indifferent disregard for life. Stay in here. It's not like you'll rot. This would be no different than bringing back the Titans. Then, uh, then as much as my argument has fallen on death years, it does mean that humanity, or for whatever reason, as you yourself said, is not, quote, ready. You may stay here. Sayana is going to clasp her hands together um, in prayer. But instead of calling on Vangal, she actually calls out to Belzameth. And she asks, what would you do in our situation? <clears throat> you make a request stop to Belsmith. Mm-hmm. I look at the shade scale. Looking at all of you. As I have said, I understand. I offer you the silent. I ask that you keep it into your custody. I shall grant you the knowledge on how to use it, control it as well as the ancient leviathan it houses beneath it. And I also offer you a warning. Even a dead Aberleth can be trouble. And who knows what fail-safe Udagast had in store. It had tapped into the ley lines of the material plane same lines that every temple and every capital is built on. But you are now attached to them as well as they are one with this island. It will allow you to keep tabs on this war on the entire world and travel wherever you may so choose. I offer you another word of caution. There are those in the dragon lens here in the ethereal that look to come back more aggressively than I do or my kind. The event of you coming here will not go unnoticed by all. A god has only traveled here and has been here for some time. And then it looks at you and that. Child. You may stay if you wish. We would be happy to have you amongst us. We would teach you what we know. You would not be able to return back to the material plane until the worlds are reunited again, or someone of great power comes to get you. But if there is sorrow in your heart, and no place for you to go, you may stay here. And then it looks at the rest of you. That offer is also available to any of the rest of you. It's not 
good for someone to escape from their sorrow. My heart goes out to you because obviously, even though you've agreed not to protect us, if we release the dragons, you're protecting us now. It's not right in my mind that the good ones have to be locked up just because of the bad ones. It would seem the last thousand years have done great things for mortals. There are clearly those amongst you that have great wisdom. It takes a few steps back and furls its wings. And all of you kind of flinch as the sudden knowledge of how this island works, how to control it, all the intricacies of it, floods all of your brains. You are able, all able to use the island as you see fit and control it. <clears throat> I will return you now to the material plane. Oh, Wait. Not. You said you'd accept any of us to stay. Gar? Of course. Look at Yine. I'm old. Time doesn't pass there. Hell, you might not even be a child by the time we're done. <laughs> It'll be a new experience. And then I'll get to see just what kind of people I kept in their cage. Although, Gar reaches into his pocket, takes a swig. I'm not going to get any of that anytime soon. Saber it while I can. Lamelthun. Use your head more. <laughs> Fuck you, old man. The mouth don't smack. Sayana, it's okay to keep people alive. Duvak, my friend. Looks like you'll need another drinking buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tall order. Don't know if we'll find another one like you. Oh, uh, hold on. I just reach into my pocket again and pull out uh, that wonderful uh, method of brewing that I found for the uh, wyvern <laughs> stinger. Oh, God. Here you go, Lalthun. This might actually <laughs> be a, something you appreciate <laughs> drinking. I want to see you be able to brew something by the time I get back. And as he's taking it from me, I use lay on hands on him just to regain, give him 20 more health because he hates it. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a handing over the recipe, a slap across the head. As Gar walks over, it takes his place by the shade scale. With a final nod. An intense feeling. It's almost like you're passing through an electric field or uh, by magnets. Everything starts to blur. You feel like you're about to get motion sick. You all come to laying on the ground in the cavern of Unagast. The body's still there. The rip in reality, not there. You all look at yourselves knowing that a great responsibility has been thrust upon you. The island, the Leviathan, the ability to 
check in on the world. But what you do with it and where you go, we'll have to wait until next season. As your flight of whimsy has come to an end. Everything fades to black, the credits roll. But at the end, there's one last scene. A mountain range, higher than any other. There are snow-capped trees go all along the side of it. A bright light shines off of the tallest peak that's in the middle. A pillar that shoots straight into the sky. A sudden, the tree's branches sway. And then a sudden burst of wind. The seeker stands amongst the trees. They have just enough time to collect their breath before they're descended upon by giant green humanoid looking creatures with large wings like eagles giant great swords held in their hands you will come with us each one puts their arm underneath this is one of the seeker's arms flying at an incredible speed that seems normal to the seeker they reach the top of the highest peak. And there, there are six thrones arranged around a central one. A central one made of tree branches and flowers, moss growing down the side of it, a giant toadstool at the forefront. Sitting in those six thrones, physical embodiment of six gods. I kneel. Corian. Corian. Madriel. Tanil. Goran. Idra. Sihana. The planetars release you and take hosts on, on each end of the set of thrones. Corian stands. 30 feet tall, towering above you, you were insignificant to him. So. You are one of the, you are one of the mortals that defeated Udagast. We know of your dealings who you are in league with. You will be tried here in the court. And your fate decided. Am I able to and speak? Let me fade black again. As season two of Dragon Genesis, the final one comes to an end. It's been a true pleasure telling the story to you, listener. We hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as we enjoyed performing it for you. I'd like to once again thank Honor Staff Publishing, National Tabletop, and Vince Swift. Special shout out goes to all of our Patreon subscribers, Twitch subscribers, and to you, audience, for joining us on this finale. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to us on Twitch. Remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime, which means you can give us a free sub every month. Uh, it is not automatic, so you will have to go back into there, hit resubscribe, use Amazon Prime, but, you know, consider giving it to us if you haven't. Uh, check out GM's Guild and Drive Through RPG for our, all of our written works. Uh, get some bodacious merch on our merch store. Join our Discord to become part of the best community on the internet. Players, let's hear from you once more. Your name, handle, character, and where people can find you. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him, and tonight I played Le Malthoon. Um, wow. Uh, next, you will find me possibly the Sunday for episode two of uh, Vampires in Space. 
possibly not. I have to double check the schedule. If not, though, possibly, uh, no, definitively on Tuesday for Twilight 2000. Tune in, check it out. Hey, uh, that brings me to talk about my stuff. Um, I am John, otherwise known as J3 Billion. Um, holy shit, it's been a fantastic night, and I am looking forward to to season three which by the way i'm just reminding everyone steve has definitely said it's gonna happen um <laughs> fair enough fair enough i can't hold <laughs> that one um i would like to say thank you for dork tales rating with party at 29 hell yeah no right? yes. oh, no you every time, time at the very end dork tales we love you so much well, thank you for the follow so appreciate follows. Thank oh, you, guys. So yeah. many. The bot, the bot is definitely worth a watch. This one was spectacular, very and intense. Uh, very intense. This is our season finale, and uh, yeah, you'll catch me back here next week, same time, same place, uh, different people. Next. That's me. I'm sorry. I'm I'm Birdie. I was sad about the people that just raided us at the end of our, uh, at the very end of our entire season. Uh, I have been Seeker Pajat now on trial with the gods. Apparently, um, once I wash this face paint off, I will go back to being Birdie uh, until season three does get announced, and I will hopefully see y'all in the Warp Tales Discord. Hi friends, my name is Keems, and you can find me on the interwebs at It's Me Keems. <sighs> Tonight I played Sayana, the Death Cleric who healed for the very first time in the entirety of this campaign, um, who's also a Hollow Legionnaire. It's been a blast. You guys can catch me here again next Friday at the same time, um, doing something a bit more spooky. So we'll see you then. Medical what? We don't talk about it. <laughs> No, we don't talk about Bruno. No, 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 no. Anyway, <laughs> hey everybody, I have been Yane. Uh, thank you for tuning in with us for season two and the finale. It was amazing. I feel like some serious character epicness occurred all the way around. But I digress. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling because it me Am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. And you can find me playing again Sunday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as Tommy. You know, that yeah, Tommy. vampire. Yeah, he's a vampire. You find him around the block, Tommy. From Sunday, you find him here. Tommy. And I am Devin, and I was Gar. And you can find me online at Sword of Sullied. And the next time you'll be able to see me is for the season finale of Dune on Monday. Everybody, season finale. Look forward to that. Mm. We just got nuked. Mm. Fuck. Mm. <laughs> I missed oh, last week's episode. Shit. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, players. I appreciate that. Normally this is where I do our vote, but I think we'll just let it stand the way it is, as uh, I don't see how anyone could possibly pick one person after tonight's episode. I would just say you all did fantastic. Very proud of all of you. Great way to end the season. Uh, it's just like a, ch a bit sheer, it's raining bits in, in the chat. Thank you, Luzvine, for all of those bits. Uh, oh, yeah, but yeah, thank you so much. Um, the hope will be to uh, revisit our characters uh, in a season three. There's a lot of repercussions of the choices they just made there at the end of this game. So uh, we'll see what <laughs> happens. Uh, please check out Wolpa Tales' other shows all throughout the week, multiple games a day, every day of the week. Uh, we need to update our calendar. Uh, we do have, we're in a kind of a switch period. We have a lot of shows ending, as you can tell, uh, and a lot of shows starting. Uh, so bear with us, uh, but in the best place right now, uh, as we're working on posters and things like that to get update schedules, is in the Discord. We'll post things 
uh, as they come out they just close so definitely should join that uh, other than that unfortunately this will be the last time I get to say we hope you enjoyed we hope we hope you enjoyed our story tonight we look forward to seeing you in the future to continue the tale until next time Corey and light your way stay safe stay awesome stay adventurous make good choices and wear a damn mask <laughs> <laughs>